There are chess lovers. Soren here, and I have a fantastic game for you played by Gata Komsky against Shahriar Mamedyarov. This game was played at 2013 FIDE World Cup. Before watching the video, consider subscribing to my channel for more games. Also, click the bell button to get notified about new uploads. Now, let's see what happened on the board. Gata Komsky had white pieces and he started with e4, c5 by Mamedyarov, Sicilian defense, knight f3, e6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight c6, knight c3, queen c7, black goes for pulse and variation, f4, d6, bishop e3, knight f6, queen f3, a6, black is taking under control of the b5 square and is preparing an advancement on the queen side. Of course, all these are standard ideas in Sicilian defense. Bishop e7, we see Kies link by both sides and king h1. White is making a prophylactic move, is moving away his king from this dangerous diagonal and is preparing an attack on the king side. Bishop d7, rook e1, the second rook is also coming, b5. A3, first white is acting against this nasty b4 threat, rook b8, the rook is coming to support the b pawn, we see the exchange of knights on c6 square, queen h3, already at some point white can go for e5, targeting the pawn on h7, rook d8, meanwhile black is preparing this d5 advancement, which is a very important move in Sicilian defense, this will free black's position and will give counter-attacking chances. Bishop d2, already this e5 is the threat in order to lure away black knight and capture on h7 with some nasty mating ideas. That's why black responded with d5 and after e5 the knight occupies the e4 square blocking the bishop's diagonal. But in this position Gata Komsky came up with a powerful idea. He played f5 and sacrificed the bishop on d2 square. Mamedyarov accepted the sacrifice and captured on d2 using the fact that the bishop's diagonal is temporarily blocked by the pawn on f5. Here comes f takes e6 and the knight again retreats back on e4 square blocking the bishop's diagonal. Of course you can't win another piece by capturing on f1 because you will simply get checkmated. That's why we see knight e4 in the game. Here comes e takes f7 check, king h8 and another powerful move this time knight takes d5 and after removing the defender you won't believe but this time Gata Komsky went for an exchange sacrifice and captured on e4 with the rook. This is simply awesome guys. What's going on on the board? The reason of capturing on e4 with the rook is that white wants to keep alive his attacking light squared bishop. Now, recapturing on e4 can be very dangerous because after bishop takes e4, it's difficult to find a good move for black. Now, if g6, then simply bishop takes g6. Or after bishop takes e4, if h6, then this time queen f5 is winning on the spot. Or after bishop takes e4, if bishop h4, trying to lure away white queen from the light squares and only then h6. This time white can push forward his past pawns and there is not much black can do. Here can you find the winning move for white? Ready? Actually, rook f6 is winning on the spot. The threat is rook takes h6, if g takes f6 then there are two ways to checkmate black king. Let's go back, that's why after rook takes e4, the rook wasn't captured and g6 was played. Now comes rook f4 and king g7, which is actually not the precise move. It was better to play queen c6 and protect the pawn from the 6th rank with the queen. But in the game we see king g7. Here comes e6 and actually this becomes very dangerous. Rook f8, queen e3. The queen is coming and is trying to exploit the weaknesses of the dark squares. Right now the threat is queen d4 check. Bishop c5 was played and queen e1. This time white is threatening queen c3 check. Bishop d6. Black is covering the c3 square with the queen. But now comes rook h4 with another devastating threat. Right now white is threatening 
rook takes h7 check for example if you play b4 just a random move then white can sacrifice the rook on h7 will rip open black's king side and then black king will simply get checkmated in a few more moves let's go back after rook h4 that's why bishop e7 was played already this rook takes h7 won't pass because the h4 square is controlled by the dark squared bishop but Kamsky didn't even pay attention to the fact that this rook on h4 is hanging he played queen e3 but actually capturing on h4 can be very dangerous because this devastating queen d4 check just finishes up black in style and then if king h6 then rook f4 black is forced to give up his queen then this is simply over this is an easy win for white let's go back after queen e3 h5 was played but actually this is creating too many weaknesses in black's king side here comes queen d4 check well, instead of playing queen d4 check, the engine says that rook takes h5 is winning even faster if g takes h5 than queen d4 only now. And then white can sacrifice the second rook as well and the game is simply over. Let's go back but in our main game after h5 we see queen d4 check, king h6 and in this position Gata Kamsky made a move and black resigned. Can you find his next move? Ready? He simply grabbed the pawn on h5 and Mamedyarov resigned. If g takes h5 then simply rook f6 check and again black king is getting checkmated. Or after rook takes h5 check if king takes h5 this can actually prolong black's life but again there is no hope for this exposed black king and black king can easily get checkmated in a few more moves here is one of the possible lines which i would like to share with you and then white can play rook f3 and the game is simply over there is no chance for black king to survive that's why in view of these variations after rook takes h5 check mamedyarov resigned this was simply a fantastic game by kata Kamsky. what an attack thanks for watching i hope that you enjoyed this mind-blowing game for more games don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.